And welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Andrew Kraft, almost the bottom of the hour here. Let's keep it moving with more of these top headlines. As you know, it's been a busy week already, but want to get this story on your radar. Uh, it's a fun one here. Back out live, though, to the White House. So this is what we know, according to Politico. Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy announcing expedited plans this week to build a nuclear reactor on the moon. This is the first major action by the former Fox News host as the interim administrator of NASA. So Fox News correspondent Mike Emanuel with more on all of this. Interim NASA Administrator and Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy is expected to announce plans to put a nuclear reactor on the moon. If we're going to be able to sustain life on the moon to then go to Mars, this technology is critically important. Clear to proceed to CAT. Experts say this is a 21st century space race with the United States rivals China and Russia. The first country to establish a nuclear reactor on the moon could block out others from setting up in the most desirable location. Everyone's sort of headed to the, the lunar south pole right now where we think the most water ice is. Lift off. Air and space law professor Michelle Hanlon says the U.S. must focus on this competition. I don't think China is currently outpacing us, but I do think they can easily outpace us at this point. What we've seen from China is that they have a very um, steady pace in, in space and they have the commitment to space. This plan to put a nuclear reactor on the moon is considered by experts a natural progression of human exploration of space, something President Trump laid out in this year's inaugural address. We will pursue our manifest destiny into the stars, launching American astronauts to plant the stars and stripes on the planet Mars. It is expected that NASA will seek input from private industry over the next two months, with the expectation that China is seeking to put humans and a nuclear reactor on the moon in the next five years. In Washington, Mike Emanuel, Fox News. Mike, thanks so much. Uh, in the meantime here, let's bring into the conversation to talk about this story. Patrick McClure there of Space Nukes, he joins me. Um, Patrick, uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, a lot of people are talking about this. Uh, and I just have to ask this. So NASA has talked about this for quite some time, but what Duffy is doing is setting an actual timetable to get this going. Why do we need a nuclear reactor on the moon? So you need a nuclear reactor for, for several reasons. Mostly it's, it's the way to keep your astronauts alive. It allows them to uh, make oxygen, to make water. Uh, it will be very good for doing all kinds of science. And in a many of the case of places where you would want to go on the moon, like, like where there may be ice, you're gonna be in a deep crater where power is not gonna be available from solar. So a nuclear reactor will be essential. So imbued in this conversation, is the subtext, is this just part of the race to beat China in so many of these aspects here, you think? Yeah, I, I think it does play a role. Uh, we are in a competition with China and Russia. Uh, we do want to, to be one of those nations that, uh, you know, goes to the stars and takes advantages of all the, all the things the moon has to offer, uh, not only including science, but potential resources that may be there to be extracted. So according to uh, Politico here, the reactor directive orders the agency to solicit industry proposals for a 100 kilowatt nuclear reactor to launch by 2030. They say this is a key consideration for astronauts return to the lunar surface. NASA previously funded research into a 40 kilowatt reactor for use on the moon with plans to have a reactor ready for launch by the early 2030s. How would this all work? How do you pull this off? How do you even get it there? Or do you have to build it there? Well, no, actually it will be sent as a, a complete unit. Uh, the United States government has been looking at this for decades. Uh, so there are a lot of designs that have been proposed. Uh, and we think actual 2030 is a very doable day. So Patrick, I also have to ask this. I think for viewers coming to this story, when you think of uh, a nuclear reactor, you think any re energy reactor oh. it produces and provides energy for us to consume. We wouldn't be using this on the moon, right? Uh, you wouldn't actually, uh, it would be used to keep astronauts sure. alive, uh, but uh, it could, 
it could provide power to a lot of things. On the moon, most things are going to need heat to stay alive because of the extreme cold. Uh, we're going to have uh, actual things there that actually are going to need a lot of power, like to turn ice into potential fuel, uh, maybe to do some mining, uh, maybe to run experiments. So uh, a lot of things a reactor could do for us. So I think you know more than most. NASA always kind of faces some of these budget cuts. Is NASA up to the task? Are they going to have the funding to really see this through to this launch date, this aim of 2030? Do you think they have it in them? Yeah, I, uh, I think that's the great thing about uh, what Administrator Duffy has done is he's made this a priority. Uh, if you look at where I think uh, Congress wants to go with some budget items, I think this will be a priority, and I think that will help NASA achieve its goal. You know, Patrick, uh, before we let you go here, what other thoughts do you have uh, about this project? This is going to take a while. Uh, is the backing there? Obviously, it's there with the Trump administration, but for folks just coming to this story, what more do they need to know about it? Is it worth it? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah, we, we believe this is a very good thing. It, uh, anytime an administrator makes something like this a priority, uh, it can be very good to help drive technology forward. So all in all, we see this as a very good sign and a, and a, a very positive step by the administration. All right, Patrick McClure there with Space Nukes. Uh, Patrick, thanks so much for your time. Talk soon. Thank, thank you for having me. All right, in the meantime here, I uh, wanted to get that story on your radar. Back out live there to the White House. Well, speaking of Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy, as you know, maybe you forgot, right now he is the interim administrator of NASA. Well, he did appear on the Fox News channel just tonight on the program The Ingram Angle, hosted by Laura Ingram. She asked him about this very same initiative. Let's watch this. And Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy. Mr. Secretary, great to see you. Now, I think a lot of people who saw this headline were skeptical. How are we going to do this? And again, why is this so important? So, first off, it's a little bit of clickbait for liberals, and they were saying we're going to have nuclear warheads on the moon, and they just misrepresented the story. You mentioned that Trump brought this up in Trump 1. Joe Biden was studying this during his administration as well. And so enough of the studies, hundreds of millions of dollars. Let's move, Laura. So on the moon, I don't think a lot of people realize there's ice. Ice means water. We do have some solar. But if you want sustainable life on the moon, you need an energy source. So we're going to bring fission to the moon's surface to power our base. It makes complete sense. Now, some might say, well, the launch is somewhat complicated, right? These are not active. They're not live. Um, when, we, when we launch them into space, we can do it safely. By the way, we have submarines and aircraft carriers that operate on nuclear energy as well. But this is a key component. If we're going to get uh, to the moon and then get to the Mars, we're going to have to figure this technology out. And again, we have to beat the Russians, the Chinese, I think, to get to the moon first. If you lead in space, you lead on Earth. Now, you want to expedite it to 2030. So uh, the goal is by 2030, which is in less than five years, we're going to have energy production capability on the lunar surface? That's what we want. So, so right now we have the Artemis program. So we've sent one unmanned mission to the moon and back. The next one is going to go in the first part of next year, a manned mission out and around the moon. And then a year after that, we're going to land back on the moon. We'll stay for six days. Last time we only stayed for three. And then from there, we want to start bringing assets to the moon for future astronauts. When they get there, they can start to deploy those assets, whether it's, you know, our, our, our bubble or our um, whatever we're going to use to to house our astronauts and then uh, turn on our energy source. And again, this is so important. The moon is complicated, but even more complicated is Mars. And if we don't start this process, the Chinese aren't stopping. The Russians aren't stopping. We have to push forward. And what's great about Donald Trump is he doesn't live in a box. He doesn't have to play by any rules. He sees opportunity. He sees what America can do, and he goes for it. That's the kind of president he is, and so he's unleashed us to push this priority forward as opposed to out of the lab. Let's get into reality. Well, will there be tariffs involved on anything made on the moon? That's a joke. Sorry. <laughs> that's, a, that's a total joke. Um, a Sean, I, I have to ask you, Mr. Secretary, oh. sorry. Um, now, your transportation secretary, which I used to work there, as you know, it was a speechwriter. 
Um, but that's a big job. And now you're doing this. Marco Rubio is wearing multiple hats. When do you sleep, sir? It's, it's a great question. Laura, so listen, I have a great team. Um, look at what we did with air traffic control. We built Newark, uh, new lines, tested it two months, got it going. We are rolling full steam ahead at DOT. The, the, the NASA needs a leader. We can't wait a week or a month or a year to make sure we start moving the moon priority forward. We, we fall further behind. So I'm able to navigate both ships um, without losing one beat. And so uh, again, I'm honored the president thought of me for this role and I'm gonna fill here and, and stay here until the next, uh, the next administrator is nominated and put into uh, position. All right, Mr. Secretary, we look forward to all of this. Thank you. Okay, so wanted to show you that clip there on the Ingram Angle tonight on the Fox News Channel. Uh, Transportation Secretary and Interim NASA Administrator Sean Duffy talking about NASA's plans to put a lunar reactor there on the moon.